Good evening and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Dan Camilleri. And I'm Laura McKillop. Firstly, we'd like to start tonight with thanking our sponsor of Dog Talk Live Q&A Sessions, Enduro, high energy food for working dogs with Real Kangaroo Meat for jumping on board for our live Q&As. Tonight, we are lucky enough to be speaking with Bree Cudmore, who will be telling us a bit about herself and her approach to working dogs. Bree will also be picking what she thinks is the best question from our live viewers, and they will win a bag of Enduro Plus. Hi, Bree. How are you going? Good, thanks, guys. How are you going? Yeah, pretty well, thank you. Good, thank you. How was your day? Yeah, not too bad. We've been a bit busy, but been good. That's good. What's keeping you busy at the moment? Uh, shifting ewes and lambs, and we've got a, about 2,000 purple tags get drenched by the end of the week, so that'll keep me busy for the rest of the week, probably getting them closer <laughs> and drenching them. Dogs so, are on the weekend off. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, very good. So tell us a bit about yourself, your family, where you're from and what you do. Um, so I'm originally from uh, Gippsland down in Trilogan. Um, eh, I grew up down there. Uh, family grew up, uh, sort of had like in town and out of town growing up. So um, my dad lived on a two-acre block out of town. So I got the best of both worlds. My mum lived in town. So growing up, we'd spend... Um, one night at one house and then switch over. Uh, sorry, one week at one house and switch over. And, it, yeah, it was really, really good. I, um, Yeah, you get to go into town one weekend and hang out with mates and then you're out in the bush mucking around the next weekend. So that was really good. And, um, yeah, I sort of always liked going camping with family and things growing up. We, um, yeah, used to go up to the bush, um, high country out near Omeo and, and get up to a bit of fun out there with some mates. Used to dad used to be um, a deer hunter, and and uh, we had family friends that were into the Bromby running. Yeah. And yeah, 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 and did that. So we used to do that for the weekends instead of yeah. I guess what most other people do at that age. We used to go out there instead, and that was really good growing up. We really what was involved in the Bromby running. Uh, so they all they all rode horses. Um, all the fellows get on the horses. They get going in the morning head out and, um, yeah, chase after the wild horses and rope them and put heads, like halters on them and, and go look for some more and load them up at the end of the day, um, which is, it's pretty, it can be a bit hairy, but it was, yeah, it was very great, great to be a part of, but you wouldn't get me sitting on a horse because I'd fall off pretty quick. So <laughs> I was always a part of the cleanup crew that come back later with the utes and stuff. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, I would, yeah, I would have been no good for that. <laughs> So you mentioned there that, um, you know, you're no good on a horse and, uh, like, most of the other guys that we've spoken to, um, you still with us there, Baru? Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, I think the camera's just playing funny buggers for some reason. No, no, that's cool. Um, most of the people we've spoken to, oh, sorry, and your first, our first woman on too, so congratulations on that. Oh, good, thank you. Good to have you on. <laughs> um, everyone else um, has had some association with horses. I know talking to you before, you preferred the bikes over the horses. That was more your sister's thing. So yeah, where yeah, did your we, um, for, with animals and also dogs come into that besides the hunting? Um, I've always, I've always liked animals. Um, I sort of before I really knew what I wanted to do, I thought about being a vet nurse or a vet or anything along those lines. Um, I did some time, um, excuse me, at a vet clinic for work experience when I was younger, but found it wasn't quite what I was looking for. It's a bit mundane, same thing, you know, vaccinate puppies. Same, same. Um, and so I sort of ventured out a bit and actually worked as a stable hand for a year and a half after I finished high school. Uh, and I really enjoy the large animals. They really sort of sucked me in. But, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can hardly walk across a paddock without falling over, so I just can't ride a horse. <laughs> Uncoordinated. Um, and so, so, yeah, my sister always rode them and I always worked on the grounds and, and – been a bit of a tomboy the road bikes were sort of the next option we sort of dad had a deal with us that when we turned um i think it was when we turned 13 or something like that we got to get the gift that we always wanted and and beck always wanted the horses and i was like oh i think i'll just go for the motorbikes you know i think it's a bit safer option one mine's better than two for me i thought um and yeah and he got into the bikes instead but always like the dogs we grew up with um Originally, Dad had stag hounds from, he's originally from um, Ararat sort of area where they did a lot of running the stag hounds on foxes and, and roos and things. So growing up as a young kid, we had them around. And then 
moving to Gippsland, his interest changed into hunting of the, the Samba deer. And um, yep. then so instead he got German short-haired pointers, so like sort of the hunting type of dogs. So I always enjoyed being around the dogs and um, handling them. And then, yeah, just sort of followed me nose. I ended up leaving my job as a stable hand and went and worked as a rouse about for a few years. Um, and always sort of found myself looking over the catching pens and watching people pen up and, and eventually I got the duties of penning up um, just through the lack of there being people around and my boss sort of taught me the gist of what I had to do and and that's what I did and, and yeah, and then from there I ran into Travis Scott from Scott Ross Contracting and saw him working his dog. He was penning up on a job for us when I was rouse about him one time and, and yeah, saw him working the dogs and thought, oh, that's pretty cool. And he'd come out, you know, we'd go out for lunch and he'd tell us his big stories about, the, you know, all the lambs they mark around the landmark and cradle and crutching and all that. And, um, yeah, I jumped on board with that pretty quick and said, oh, look, you know, shearing season's coming to end. Do you mind if I come and see what's on the other side of the shearing shed? And he's like, yeah, no worries. And then it's gone from there with the working dogs, I guess. It's sort of one thing followed the other with me. I sort of just always followed the interests. Mm-hmm. So what advice would you give to young people that live in town and are thinking about farming in the agriculture industry um, in general for a career? Sorry, what was that? Uh, what advice would you give to young people that live in town and are thinking about farming and the agriculture industry in general for a career? Um, just go for it, I guess. Um, hang on. Sorry, I pressed something there. Um, yeah, just go for it. Don't don't be too afraid. Um Try your hardest to – it's sort of hard when you're not a part of the industry, but be sort of careful, I guess, at the start who you go for. Try and get a few references because um, it's easy to fall in the trap of working for the wrong people, I think, um, which I don't think there's too many of them out there anymore, but there's always the odd one that's going to lead you astray. Um, but, yeah, just and just have a go, you know. Don't, don't go in there saying, I want 30 bucks an hour. Just go in there, show them what you can do. You know, show them that you're eager to learn. Most of the time, that's what they want. Is there someone that's eager to learn and have a go? They can teach you what they you need to know. It's just the attitude's the thing they can't teach you to have. Um, so that's what I would just say. Yeah, just get, get some contacts with some people. Whether you know, if you're in school, see if you got any people you know that are um, kids that have grown up on farm. If they know anyone or anything like that. But yeah, just get yourself out there if, if you keen. Um, or and even you know, if you're really keen, you can go to colleges have a crack at the ag colleges and stuff that'll get your connections easy um but yeah don't don't shy away from it oh, that's awesome so um how do you incorporate what you've um you've learned um in such a short time into your, into your working dogs um well i can't like i said i was pretty lucky to come in my introduction was with um a capable handler uh Trav, you know, Trav's quite successful with what he does. So I didn't have too many bad habits starting, so it makes it easier to continue up on the up, I guess, from there. Um, but, yeah, I sort of just, just put a lot of time into it too, always sort of thought about what was happening. I was, I'm fairly, um, fairly enthusiastic about stock flow as well, which has really, I think, helped uh with the progression of the dogs is also my interest in as much the stock as i am in the dog so yep. that i think that really fast tracks a lot of it stock flow so obviously um that's not something you learn in town so that, that <laughs> <was really strong. laughs> you no. mentioned um, no you know, you, 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 didn't quite learn that at the bus stop that, 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 that's right <laughs> so um how much of that came into um, your rousing about and, you know, you didn't just grab dogs and learn stock flow, did you? Uh, no, I sort of, uh, yeah, penned up on my own without dogs a lot early days and um, trial and error, just sort of having a random crack at things and some days something would work and other days it wouldn't. Um, and I was just, you know, one, one day you'd open the gate in the corner and, they wouldn't want to flow and then you try a different gate in a corner and they do. So I just sort of learned to just make life easier because without dogs it can be quite hard. Yep. Um, and, yeah, and then Trav, obviously, he's he's a good stocky and he, he taught me through all of it too. So, yeah, we'd be there on the crutch and trail of crutch and sheep all day and there's nothing much to talk about but dogs and stock. For us, really, we'd just sit there and talk about things all day and, and 
talk about different theories and ideas and I'd say, oh, well, if, if, if you do this, you know, what will happen? And he'll, he, you know, give his theory and we'd muck around with a few things. Um, but, yeah, it's it was just trial and error really early on, especially without the dogs. Um, so if you, had, if you didn't have dogs now, how could you still do your work that's required of you now? I honestly couldn't. Um, I currently work on a property. It's about, what have we got? We've got about... 2,800 hectare, um, roughly 12,000 sheep at the moment, and I'm the only stocky. The other boys don't really work the stock. Um, so I, yeah, I just couldn't get the day-to-day job. -day. I might get one thing done for what I do with the dogs. I get 10 things done a day. I might have only get one of them done, or they'd have to hire a lot of other people, and we'd have probably a lot of arguments about why the sheep won't run through the fence, the, the gateway and stuff. Um <laughs> Uh, that would be like other people that have um, alternating opinions with it. No, no, never. It was just you know, it's it's hard enough trying to coordinate myself, let alone someone else. Um, so yeah, I, I just couldn't get the job done without the dogs. I probably don't need the the size team that I have, but I um I like to be able to rotate dogs fairly reasonably and, and get the longevity out of them and and just you know if one of them's annoying me, I just want to have a few options to switch out and um. Yeah, constantly able to switch through dogs. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your team and what attracted you to those dogs, that, like their lines and tights. Um, so oh, everyone knows Zoe. So she was the first dog that I got. Um, obviously she's uh, Marista Zoe. So she's um, she, she's Dindara Boss and the second and Bocco Doll Crazy. She's was why I, when I said to Trav, I was interested in dogs. I worked for him for about three years before I decided to get my own dog. Um, and I said, oh, look, I've got X amount of money. You know what jobs we do. You know what I'm looking for and you know what I get along with. Just keep an eye out, whether it's people you know, Facebook, whatever. Um, and just, yeah, let us let us know if you see the dog and I'll buy it. And then about a couple of months later, he, he got... Saw on Facebook, Marista Zoe for sale, Lauren Vest was selling her, and, and then he wasn't actually, he didn't think I was that serious about getting dogs. Um, <laughs> so, and anyway, and I, yeah, jumped on it and got her, and, and yeah, she's obviously been the beginning of it all. And then following her, I got um, Highfields Cooper. He's a fairly paddock type, uh, real casual dog. You don't, don't have a lot of punch with him, but he holds stock up really nicely. So he was sort of that additional very experienced he's three year old by the time I got him um handy dog uh and then following him I had Moana come up and she's Moana. my next dog oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, who Moana? Moana? sorry who named Moana uh Trav's daughter Grace Scott named Moana oh, there you, go. you would so, have to be a kid yeah she um and it suck it's a good name I thought um <laughs> But yeah, she's got a bit bit extra in her. She's got a fair bit can shift some stock. So yeah, I've sort of tried to always sort of look at the team and think what's missing and who what do I need if I'm trying to get a job done. So and then yeah, I've got a couple others. So Jimmy's coming through. He's more of a yard type. And then I've got I've quite a few pups at the moment that are to come up. Um, I did have an extra other paddock dog, but I sold him earlier in the year. Just someone was looking for one, and he was on the chopping block for later on. But you know, when someone asks for a dog and if you've got one that's there, you sort of tend to send them off. So, yeah, that's the, the sort of main thing. I've only got four main dogs at the moment that are that are at work doing the job every day. Um, and then, yeah, the pups are coming up. Hopefully they should be fairly a fair big part about oh, a part of the team by the end of the, the year, you I would say. To, sorry, you, you seem to have a couple of different types there. How um, How's your, um, the work you do influence... That, that team and is it different from do you see it changing any direction from the dogs that you started with well the hard well, yeah it's, it's a good question but the hard part for me is that um or you can't give me a bag of dog food <laughs> yeah, yeah well the hard part for me is i've only been working dogs for about five years now so yep. i'm still trying to find what really i get along with and what i really like to see and what i want in a dog so that's why I do have such a versatile bloodlines and, and team at the moment is I'm just still trying to figure it all out and get a base um, and, and and really find what, you know, what, what works with me. Uh, yeah. And, and to, yeah, to make sure I'm not 
being uh, closed-minded with it too. I'm sort of very open-minded to trying different things and different types of dogs. So that's probably why my team fairly – there's no, you know, consistency in it yet because it's just, you know, I'm right at the start and any probably anyone knows at the start you sort of – you give anything a go till you find what you get along with and, and then you'll sort of follow that for a bit and create your own line, I think. Yeah, is this – if you could – Bring something into it, or something into your own line. What what would that be? Uh, no, let's see. Um, <laughs> like those, yeah, it's a tough, how do you word this? Um, no, just the, <laughs> that that uh, a calm. I like a dog with a calm mind, but still has yeah. the ability to fire. You know, like still moves quick enough because. Uh, the dogs that I have in my team, ones with the Karma Minds team, to be a bit cash. You know, they're just a little bit casual about the job. You know, they don't mind if they don't get it done right now. Where the dogs that I have that want to get the job done now, which is fantastic when you're under the pump, they just can be a bit fiery in the brain. So you, you got to you yourself have to keep control, or otherwise they fire up too much. Um, yep. So yeah, so I sort of I think just to get in that to have that dog that's still able to fire and get things done and, and shift and shift stop but keep keep the calm head is probably just something that I'm looking for. Um that yeah that's something I probably like my team lacks a bit of is that I would think. No, well answered. <laughs> I've been, I've been I a couple of questions yeah. here. Do, do I get a bag of dog food if I could answer a question well? <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll say at the end though. <laughs> So what do you like about working stock and farming in Victoria? Oh, what's not to like? You know, you, you can get all four seasons in one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I um, uh, I just I just like the well where I am now. It's quite good country. You know, you get you get a fairly consistent rainfall, so you're not in drought very regularly or anything like that. Um, yeah, you you you. Yeah, what else do you want? Um, I just enjoy, I enjoy the versatility of the land. You know, we've uh, where I am. Um, the dogs are pretty essential for the the land we've got. We've got very rocky volcanic rock all over the farm, so there's just some places I can't get to in the buggy. I'd have to get off the buggy and walk in there if I didn't have a dog because the sheep go up on there and go, ha ha, you can't get us. So, um, I like that, and then and I like the you know, there's quite a lot of different styles of stock down here. When I was contracting, you know, you. you'd be able to work composites one day, Marino's the next, and, you know, everyone's got a little bit of everything around here. So, um, but, yeah, that's sort of what I enjoy about it and the and seasons still, are nice. And stealing your hay and your water for a few years there, I'd say it'd stay pretty green down there compared to the northern part of the mm. eastern coast as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we definitely got it a lot better than you guys up there. It's nice to have a consistent rainfall and, and yeah, last summer was quite a green summer for us really. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it, it's just nice not to be, you know, constantly worried about it not raining. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. And I would say, um, well, well, it's probably hit and miss up in New South Wales. We're probably um, a, bit, uh, a bit more fortunate than our friends up north or, or west. Yeah. So, no, Got to leave us up there, don't they? Yeah, 100%. So if you could travel anywhere to experience working dogs and farming principles, where would you like to go and why? There's a couple there's a couple of those. Um New Zealand, probably be a mm -hmm. big one. It's just completely crazy over there. It's on steroids, I would think, just from the little bits that I've seen. Um and, and even more of Australia, you know, it, it just the few trials that I've been able to go up north for and, and travel around to and see seeing the other different types of dogs, the Australians and such. I, um, yeah, I really actually like to travel. I'd I just love to do a trip around Australia and just drop in and see everyone and see their dogs. Um, that'd be sort of that's, yeah, those sort of two plays, that sort of two style of things would be sort of what I'd love to do. And, um, See how how different. It's just yeah, would like to see how different people in in Australia itself because I know we all have our own ways of doing it. Um, work dogs. Mm -hmm. So when you started out, um, did you attend working dog schools? And one day, would you like to run your own sort of thing, or how do how do you feel about that? Um, 
it might be a, a long one, long way away one day. Um, <laughs> uh, I I did. I obviously Travi Scott. I went to his place most weekends and worked work dogs at his place and did try a lot of training with him. But I also went to uh, Gary White School, held by you, me, and the dog. Yeah. Um, got a lot out of that. Uh, I've been Adam James held a weekend up at his place. Went up to that. Um, Joe Spicer and Gary Sharrick did a secrets to trialing school that DYUFDA put together. That I got a lot out of that. That was good. Um, yeah, definitely happy. To, like I'm still going to plenty of schools whenever I can. I held a school with Trav and Adam down here actually uh, early in the year or last year. Um, mm -hmm. So Where yeah. Where do you say you got a lot out of these, you say you got a lot out of these schools? Um, can you? Expand a bit on that for uh, people watching us out there tonight. Yeah, it sort of, for me, it made me feel like I was actually on the right track at times too when I was sort of questioning what I was doing. Um, you know, they sort of open your eyes to the fact that sometimes you're a bit hard on yourself and your dogs and you probably expect a little bit much at certain times. Like, yeah, you're expecting a bit too much from a young dog and they're going, they're fine, you're just, you just need to chill out or stuff like that and also yeah give you a few options when you're not sure of how to tackle something or if you're the way that you normally tackle that isn't working it was just giving you more tools i guess in your toolkit to to handle different types of dogs or different scenarios so that's what i really and and just the community also you get you create friends going to schools and you get a bit more of a community base feel um so if you do have questions you got people to ask where if you know if you don't don't have that, you sort of find yourself stuck in a place where you don't know what to do. Yeah, that's right. And getting those, um, you know, you've, you've spoken about some fairly hand, um, capable handlers there, and obviously you've got a few different opinions. How do you go personally working with those opinions and mm. kind of figuring out what works for you and how much, you know, what, what do you take from column A and column B and kind of make your own way? Um. I, I so you take as much as you you want from it, I guess. If if like if I sort of see it and go, that's that's obviously works for them, but I don't think it will work for me. I'll still give it. A, I'll try it because um, I'm you know always up to try anything. But if if I don't see it working or I don't see it being practical or I, you know if I just don't think I'll have the facilities to do it, I just know it's there in the future that if I find myself in that scenario, I can handle it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I just took took as much yeah took out what I wanted from it um, and generally go to the schools with an idea of what I want to work on or what I see as an issue and then find other issues when I'm there because they go what the hell are you doing doing that for and you go oh, I didn't even realise I was doing something wrong um, <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, it, you can take out from them sort of things as much as you want and. Um, even if I always think of it, if, if it's not something like if you're there with a dog that's only six months old, you know, you're only going to take away from that the things that you can apply to it then. But if you take notes and take down there's st all the stuff they go through, you can use later on in life. And and you might not even might not even be for that dog. It might be a dog 10 years down the track you get that's completely different to what you've had before. That, that just gives you that extra someone, someone that's done it before with all different types of dogs. It just gives you that extra tool to have when you know you didn't expect to use it so i always try to keep keep um notes and and yeah if i'm finding a trouble with something i'll look back over them and use them um yeah it's it's definitely amazing how we remember things that you never thought you would use again and you end up finding yourself doing it <laughs> yeah exactly and, and you know desperate times you go well Everything I've done so far is not working. What did that school that I went to of Gary's, you know, when that question yeah. was asked, I'll go back in the book and have a look and be like, oh, well, Gary gave this a go. We'll see if that works, you know. Um, if it doesn't, uh, then you just call him up and say, Gary, what's going on? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, I'll make notes on my phone and then sometimes, like, when I'm waiting for an appointment or something, you know, you get scroll through your notes and you've got nothing else to do and I'll, I'll yeah. read something. I'll read this note and I'll be like, Shit, I haven't done that for a while. What, 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 why haven't I been doing that? And maybe that's where I've been going wrong. And most of the time, it's just coming back to some basics. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I um, I do it all the time. If, if I'm feeling like I'm going backwards a little bit, or if I'm stalled, or I'm lacking enthusiasm in trying or training dogs or anything like that, if I just feel a bit blah about everything, 
Um, yeah. I'll sometimes just go back into those books because I've got it all written down in books and, and lots of different things written down. And, yeah, just start turning pages and having a look and go, oh, I haven't done that for real. Like I might go out the train and ring and go do that. Yeah, I've got a good a dog there that's at that level. I'll give that a go. And it sort of actually, yeah, it helps to spark interest again when I've lost it a little bit too. Um, and, yeah, and just gives you that bit of a, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that was really fun when we did that training technique or whatever else. So that's sort of how I try to um, – approach it I guess it, it's just there as another tool for me to use whenever I'm struggling or, or lacking interest I think. Mm -hmm. We have a question here come through from Danny Kerr um, it sounds like it started with a going dog how old was that dog and why did you not start with a pup? Um, so yes I did start with a going dog um, Zoe was one in a one in three months I think when I brought her um, mm -hmm. The reason I started with the going dog is because I wanted to get, I wanted to have, I wanted to, so because I, I worked for Trav, I always used his dogs, and I want to have a dog that I could go out and go bring the sheep from the big yard into the small yard with, and actually start doing something with. Um, I can be patient, but I just thought for my first dog, I probably didn't have the patience to wait for it to grow up and get ready. I wanted to start doing stuff then. Um, and, and I also felt personally I wasn't prepared to start a pup. I was worried I was going to stuff it up or, you know, um, not spend enough time with it or, you yeah, know, there's so many things that you can, you think you can muck up pups with. Um, so, yeah, I sort of just thought it, for me it was a good idea to go for a going dog and, and that's when I got Zoe. So And it worked out extremely well for me. Um, with that one, so, so yeah, 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 good ask, really good, really good, yeah, um, but yeah, it, it's always tricky though getting a started dog because everyone says they come with bad, that, you know, they could come with bad habits and stuff, I was just lucky that I got a really good one um, and that was started it really well, I think she was, um, yeah, really well trained early, like just had nice manners and everything, so and she was ripe and ready to start training properly and going to work, so it worked out for me, but yeah, the pup. I've got, like obviously I've got pups now, and since I've brought pups and things, but yeah, I just really wanted to have a dog to get get started doing the job with. Jump straight into it. Jump yeah, off. pretty much. Yeah, somehow I could roll up. Oops, sorry. You're right. No, I was gonna say, just add there, like talking to you previously um, for tonight. I know that um, you haven't really moved on many dogs. Um, you know, you actually like to stick with your younger dogs and work with them. You want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, well, it probably helps that, yeah, I'm still build, trying to build the team. So, yeah. you know, there's still room for dogs to come through. Um, I've got the time in my life to do that at the moment. Yeah, I've got I've got a partner, but I haven't got any kids. I haven't got any other commitments in my world. So it's quite, it's a lot easier for me than probably other people to put the time into the young dogs or, or wait them out a little bit, um, yeah. wait for them to mature or if they're going through a stage, sort of wait it out. Um, and... And I don't know, like I, I get it, you know, get attached to things. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't want to. The yeah, partner so, will be happy hearing that. Sorry. But your partner will be happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like yes. Um, <laughs> not even like, um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I just yeah, as where my life is at the moment, I've got the time for it, and I've got the time for them, so. I'll, I'll happily put it into them. And and if you look at how dog prices are now, it's not like they're going to go down in value if I hang on to them and put a bit of training into them. So um, if I make that call later on, it's not costed me anything, I don't think, except a couple of dog biscuits to have hold on to the dog. So, and, and yeah, like I said, I've got the time. I've got the room and the team. Um, it'd probably be a bit different if I had six going dogs and, you know, I only have space for a certain amount of dogs come through. But at yeah. the moment I've got the room, so I can afford to do it. Are you? Do you see yourself capping out at a number there that's comfortable for you to manage at home? Yes. And yes, hundred um, percent. Yeah. I've sort of set, I've set the rule. But I'm getting the dirty eyes from the partner as we're speaking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I said, I'm, I'm going that you're probably over over there then. No, no, no. I'm sitting on it. It just never seems to go below a certain number. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, so I've sort of told myself currently for where I am, what I'm doing, 10 dogs in the camp is it. So that's saying I have about five, five to six main team dogs um, and allows room for pups or retired dogs um, at the other end. But, yeah, it, it 10 will be is 
maxing out, which I'm sitting on at the moment, but one's set to go to a home uh, hopefully soon. So, yeah, but 10 is pushing the boundaries in my team. Yeah, good, good luck with that. Well, I said four, and now I've got seven kennels there. And <laughs> we haven't doubled up yet, but there's already plans for other, other yeah, parts. Well, Who knows? <laughs> The, the thing that doesn't help my addiction is that my partner is extremely good at making dog cages. So every time, yeah, <laughs> every yeah. time I just go, hey, I need another two kennels. <laughs> this sort of, I've done something naughty and I brought another dog. Can, can you build me more kennels? <laughs> What's his turnover time at the moment? How quickly can he build one up? Uh, two, two, yeah, two weeks. He said, yeah. Jack's about two weeks. <laughs> well, that's, I'll that's keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, so... Yeah, that's my team. Anyway, 10's about it for now and probably for a while, I'd say. Oh, very cool. So obviously the National Kelpie Field Trial is one of the pinnacles of sheepdog trialling. Uh, what have you taken away from that on a personal level and what do you think's next? Well, um, on a personal level, it was something I've worked really hard to get to. Um, obviously travelled the big distance, but uh, pre like leading up to it, there was a lot of work um, I put into myself and the dogs to get us to a point where I felt like we could compete. Um, and so coming out of that with with the win, like my goal was to, the finals was my goal. Mm -hmm. I thought I had a good enough dog and I thought I could do it myself. The finals was the goal to achieve and, and yeah, being able to get that and more was, yeah, it's still... I honestly still don't think it's fully sunken in. Um, obviously, you know, like it just sort of doesn't. Um, but, yeah, it, it's really, I guess, given, given me a bit of a stage on stuff like this is people want to talk to me now um, and, you know, actually know what my opinions are and all that, which I never really had a lot of. Um, and what's next is whatever I can get my hands on. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, I... I quite happy to to yeah keep keep pushing and trying to do like I'd love to do another one would be the you know I always think that you know once is always nice but if you can do it multiple times you're doing something right and it, it sort of really solidifies your your success I think is being able to do things multiple times and so I'd take anything but yeah I'd love to get that try and get that one again um they're all hard to they're all hard to win, aren't they? So you, you grab anyone you can, but that yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, you know, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> well, they can. I thought that. Actually. But um, yeah, it's um, they're they're far and few between the wins. You know, with ones and twos splitting um finals or even not making a final. You know, like so yep. every opportunity you get. So uh, you know, I I just when you you said that you take everything you get, like, I totally get that. You know. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, and and. Personally, I would like to be considered as someone that's not just got a certain style of, um, like, that, you know, just good at one thing. I want to personally be good at or successful. I don't, it doesn't matter if I win or not. I just want to be known as someone that's capable of getting any job done, anything that's put in front of her, she's, she gets it done and gets it done, Some makes it look easy, you know, something like that. That's always sort of been what I thought, whether you win or not, if – you get a lot more respect, I think, from your peers if you can just you make it look easy and you enjoy yourself and, and you just, yeah, handle. If you can handle any obstacle put in front of you, I think that's I, that's the pinnacle in my eyes almost more so than just winning. Um, yeah, exactly, 100%. Yep. And, and yeah, um, across the I think the it's amazing first dog and you've come out and done that. Like, it's pretty cool, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, It's funny. It definitely wasn't... Um, in the grand plan of things, it was sort of, I thought it might be a bit further down the track, but it was, I do remember not long after I got Zoe, Trav and I had done a bit at work and I'd been working. I think it was the first session I did any backing with her. And um, we're coming home, we're talking about dog trials and things because that's all we ever talked about. Um, and he was talking about her and we're gone. I was like, oh, like, I really like her. And he's like, yeah, he's like, no, she's a good little dog. You know, she'll, she'll, she'll win the odd open for you. And, and that's how the conversation was going. And I'm like, well, oh, she's done a bit more than that. But, yeah, no, she, I, I'm extremely lucky to come across um, a dog like her for the very beginning. You know, she's so forgiving because um, you got to think, like, she's taught me so much in in three years that I've had her with, you know, I've, 
yeah, I couldn't have succeeded as much as I have without her teaching me and holding my hand along the way and forgiving me for my mistakes and, um, and yeah, just and giving me 100% of her efforts the whole time. It, it's a, She's an incredible little dog um, and I'm glad she's getting the light shone on her that she deserves because she, she does exceptional work at work. You know, she's, she's one of my main paddock dogs and I'm glad that she's, you know, gone and shown herself off like something like this to really... Yeah, so everyone else can see how what I see, you know, every day. How many did you wreck? Think you would wreck before you got a good one? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's all right. I, I, I just went through all Trav's dogs first and wrecked them. Actually, got a question here from Kate. Uh, what is your perfect dog? Oh, look, Zoe's not far off it. That's a good question. Um. She is not far off it. Uh, she's 100% committed. She, you know, she's very easily trained too. Like anything I had to teach her, she was very quickly to switch on to what you're showing her and and got the hang of it really quick. Uh, her biggest fault, I would say, is she's just not. Uh, doesn't have a very strong effect on a stock, which is really great. Like it, it, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, so that's where she can treat a stock really kind outside, and they respond really nicely to her. But if you get the real heavy sheep, she'll still try. She does everything right, but, you know, she can't just stand there and they'll move off her. She hasn't got that. Just the way people talk about that, I guess, it's strengths or presence naturally. That's something you just can't teach them. They've just got it in them. Um, so, yeah, just pretty much Zoe with a bit of um, presence, I guess, uh, where the stock just go, ooh, if they look at it and go, just don't think I'm going to try doing that right now. I just don't think, I think if I come back at you, you're going to chomp my face or something. You know, they just have that effect where the sheep just look at you and go, you mean business, I'm not even going to try and break, I'm going to go that way. And that's, yeah, that's my ultimate dog would just be what I have in her with just that ability of look them dead in the eye and say, if you come this way, you won't want to do it again. Um, so, yeah, because I like sh her fault is you get to a pen in trial, for example, and, um, you know, sheep will try and break on her because they just want to test her um, because she just doesn't have that um, scary effect on them. Yeah. Ash, got yeah. a question here from Ben uh, talking about break. Um, how, what is it, how much, how do you think break has come up in Kelpies compared to, like, Collies? Like, a lot of people know um, Kelpies, I suppose, where he's gone for, you know, a bit of force and whatnot. Um, but we're seeing a lot more dogs out there doing a lot of, like, outside kind of work. Um, you think break something, I think it's the lines you're going through, um, break is something that's um, getting more important rather than just grunt? Yeah, look, I can't talk because, again, like I've only had such a limited experience with the dogs, so I've had no experience with Border Collies, so I can't talk too much on what they do and don't do because I haven't handled them or, or seen a lot of them. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I've, I'm definitely personally, when I look at, bloodlines and looking at certain dogs when I want to buy something in or something that's working, I will keep an eye out. And if you see that dog that, you know, keeps, holds them together but does that breakout when they go to shift, um, I don't mind getting that because I think there isn't, there hasn't been a hell of a lot of like that I've seen, especially down in, like it probably depends where you come from, but where I am there's not a lot of dogs that naturally do that. We can sort of push them out a bit, but, yeah, they still, like I've got, and I, I can't talk my team, I've got dogs in my team that will, if you say to go right, they will go right but come in at the same time. Um, so it's definitely it's definitely something that I think people are starting to look for a bit more in. Um, but, yeah, it's a tricky one, I think, sometimes. Like I've got the dogs that do it are that lighter touch dog, so they, they're trying to be a bit kinder to the sheep where sometimes kindness can hurt you as well it's just finding that happy medium of the dog that can break out get to that point but then walks in and says i mean business you still got to shift like yeah it's um it's a bit of a tricky you know yeah. fence to sit on that one i think sometimes yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. well um talking about trolling before there what, what is your favorite troll and why is that um Good question. What have I got? Well, I really, obviously, I really enjoyed my time at Queensland. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it, down here. Well, yeah, the weather would have been more consistent. 
yeah, well, it was nice, really nice weather up there, actually, and the, not too hot, and, yeah, it was really good. But now down here there's a few. Um, I always try to go back to Gippsland and support the trials that I began with, so there's a couple down there, Stockdale Utilities one I really enjoy. We sort of do a camp oven at night and, and yeah, um, it's a bit more of a relaxed feel. You know, we all sit around the fire and have a few beers that night and stuff. Um, I really enjoyed the Omeo held the state championships for the yards for Victoria two years ago, I think it was, or a year ago. Um, that was awesome. Uh, the, if you, anyone's not been to Omeo, it's a beautiful um, high country views and, yeah, it was, it was a really good bunch of people. Everyone got along. We all went to the pub every night and for the, the couple of days that the trials were on and stuff and it's just... It was really fun. And then there's also one actually out at Dundonald near where I live now that Vin Getty help, holds. Um, he had the Encourage Challenge out there. That's pretty yeah. fun too. They um they put the sheep in a cage and then pull the trigger and let them out and you that's when you cast your dog. So it's, there's no fences, so that's pretty fun if you, if you want to test yourself out for some sheep that know where the hills are and how to get away and there's no fences to stop them. It, it was good fun. And, good fe again, good good feeling, good vibes, good bunch of people. That's sort of what I really enjoy too is the, the people that are at those sorts of trials um, are good fun. Is that an actual cap gun or what are, what are they firing off there? No, so they pull – so they're all – the sheep are out in a cage and they pull the lever and opens the door. Yeah. So they come out of the cage and then that's it. You send the dog and you got to pull them up before they get over the ridge. And if they – the rules are if they get over the ridge, you just – that's it. You've lost sheep. But you got to get try and get your dog back that's already out there trying to bring the sheep back. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it's just as much fun to let them just go. <laughs> How successful is that with the younger dogs? Yeah, it's really good test to see who's got a good recall or, yeah. or stop. <laughs> you work on that before you get out there. Yeah, yeah. It's that thing that we all go, oh, yeah, no, first thing you teach them is a recall and a stop. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Them, I, yeah, I know. Look, I can't talk. My dog, some of them were just like, no, oh, no, I'm getting the sheep. I'm like, yeah, but uh, okay. <laughs> you see me walking over to go get the dog back. It'll be back in five minutes. Just got to get me dog from the paddock. <laughs> uh, cool. What's that on there, Laura? So we've just had a question come in from Mark Mangold. Have you only had Kelpies as your preference breed and would you ever consider other breeds to work with? Yeah, um, so, yeah, I have only had Kelpies. I, like, again, only been doing it five years. So, you know, still trying to find my feet with the Kelpies. Um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I would consider it. Like, I do – I've seen a few three sheeps and I've three, seen some nice Border Collies and I would I would go for another breed, whether it be Border Collie I, don't know. I haven't seen much of coolies or anything in real work, so I, I can't really have any say on any of that. Um, but it, it's more just trying – it's like I'm still trying to find the dog that I get along with in the breed I'm in at the moment, so it would be the same. It's just switch over. It'd it take quite a while for me to find something that I get along with and, and, and you know, we can understand each other and work on the same page. So I, I'm more – like I've said, I'm more than open to trying different things and having a crack at anything, but – I'm also one where I, I like to um, feel that I've completed something 100%. So until I feel like I've I've got a fairly good grasp on the Kelpies, I don't think I'd be jumping over yet. I just, yeah, like to feel like I've achieved, like fully achieved to the best of my abilities before I jump ship, I think. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah. Do you have any cattle work down there at all? No, not really. Um, Like there's plenty of cattle down in Vic and there's, you know, Mansfield and all that's got plenty of cattle up there. I personally haven't done much. Yeah. Um, with, our, with the contracting, not many cattle jobs. We did a couple of calf marking jobs, but most of them we didn't really have the dogs on the job because cattle's already in the yard and, and you're not doing much um, with the dogs. But, no, me personally, not a lot of cattle experience. Um, Is it something you would like to get under your belt? Um, not really. <laughs> yes and no. I'd... I, for the dog sakes, I would like to test them out on cattle and, and you know, give them that extra lever, I guess, or gear or give them that bit of something different. Um, yeah. But I'm scared shitless of losing a dog that way or, you know, even just, yeah, I like a worried mother when the kid goes to school and plays in a footy match or something, I guess. Like I just go, I couldn't stand, I couldn't bear the idea of them getting hurt and, and that just, and because I don't, 
have a full understanding of the cattle work and, and, you know, how to work cattle really well myself, I would just be, yeah, I get very nervous about the idea of working dogs on cattle. Um, Pretty compassionate about your dogs, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, well, look, you know, they're me best mates and they're, 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 they're there for me every day. Um, you, you sort of get a bit close with them, I guess. Um, and, yeah, I, I do love them as much as sometimes they drive me batshit crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I just... Crazy, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I would... It'd be more for my inexperience that I, I worry about it is that I, out of inexperience would I put them in a situation that I shouldn't or, you know, either my inexperience of not being handling cattle much, um, you know, would I misjudge a situation and, and call it wrong? And, and, yeah, that's where I'd be worried if, if, if something happened because of my poor judgment. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be pretty shattered. You take a lot of responsibility um, on board for what you do and for your team. Is that is that something that you go in open like you obviously go in you know with that mindset all the time that you know what are the what can what can't happen and you know how am I going to make sure that we all go home safe at the end of the day? Yeah, look like you well you've got a you think like you know I'm the one with the supposedly meant to have the biggest brain out of all of us so I've yeah. got to be the one because I know that they're not thinking about that stuff so I've got to think about it and 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 take ownership. Um, Especially, you know, like if things happen in the yards as they do, you know, dog chases, sheep into a fence or something, that's as much as you want to blame the dog, that's much my fault for not seeing it before it was going to happen or, or um, you know, just sometimes it happens and that's life. But I try not to make excuses and, and, and yeah, take full ownership for what happens regarding the dogs or myself. Um, I think it's the best way to be and it, it just... It's, I think it's partly why I've strived to be better is I take ownership for when things don't work out. Um, and, and yeah, it's, I've, yeah, like I said, I'm supposed to have the bigger brain, although some days I don't. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're smarter than me most some days. But, yeah, I'm meant to be the smarter one of the a lot of us. So if I don't do it, they're not going to. So. I think that's actually a pretty important point there is taking some accountability. You know, mm. like, actually, uh, well, you know, that, that's on me, not the dog. Yeah, I, I put my dog into that situation, and um, where I was leading with that question as well is, I kind of gather that you're not going to put yourself, uh, put your dogs into a situation that you kind of wouldn't do yourself, or you wouldn't feel comfortable. Mm. Yeah, look, like there's definitely times I do. Like I, you know, I'm not about to go run back through the legs of sheep because that's yeah. very painful to me, and I don't think I'd be able to avoid injury. But I, um, like when I, I used to work at a sheep start over at Hamilton. For a year and a half before I took on the role I'm currently in, and obviously with that comes working rams. They had composite Paul Dorset and Southie rams on that property, and you know nearly a thousand rams. Um, we had about 500 rams going to the auction, um, and so obviously I need the dogs still to get the job done. So I'd sort of pick and choose. Unfortunately, there's always a weakest link in your team, and you, you know there's always probably up on the pedestal. So someone else is going to be lower down. So she would work the rams. I would never, I never take a dog away from a job because I don't want it to get hurt. But I just pick and choose when, when it's going to be a question of who's going to get hurt. I will probably send in the lower level dog or the dog that I don't regard as as good because yeah, if it's going to get injured, I'd rather it not happen to the best dog. Um, but that dog's still got to be able to handle that situation. But yeah, I, and and sometimes like yeah. It's just you got to use your smarts. If if your dog's going to get hurt doing it, sometimes it's just easier to, you know, step in, be a part of it, move the stock yourself. It's not always up to the dogs to do the job. Um, that's where you know talk about stock flow. I I just you know get get the flow happening myself at the front. The dogs will just hold them up in the safer position, and I'll start a flow. Or yeah, just try and. I'm pretty big on trying to get as much life out of my dogs as I can too. So if I can avoid injury, that's more years. That dog's going to do more work for me. So it pays out in the long run too. Yeah. Got a question here from uh, Will Cox. Um, been around, sorry, I haven't got glasses on. So Lord, <laughs> been, <laughs> this was about this earlier, didn't we? Um, been around for five years. Um, the lines you had, right, and obviously there with, um, with Zoe as a pup, what attracted you to those lines and um, – what caught your eye and moving forward, are there um, characteristics in other lines that you could gravitate towards too? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one too. Um, 
So, obviously, I didn't really have much say in any, like, other than the fact I didn't know. I don't didn't know anything about bloodlines really other than the ones that drive out his team because I could visit, like, I'm very much need to visualise something so I could see the dogs so I could understand the bloodlines. Um, So Zoe's bloodlines weren't anything I was aware of or knew anything about. So I was just trusting Trav's knowledge of dogs and and because he's been around for quite a while and he knows quite a lot of people. So he knew there was good bloodlines there. Um, And most of my team's got different ones. At the moment, though, I have got uh, one male dog that's showing through my team. So Moana's father, um, I also used him over Zoe for her last joining. So I've got three pups by that at the moment. So I've got quite a bit of that in my team. Um, And then I'm also sort of just trying to start to get a feel on the different bloodlines. You know, you start to see videos on Facebook and stuff. So I'm just starting to get a few that I wouldn't mind trying. Um, There's a Tundabadi dog that I'm going to join her to next um, who's been a bit of a flavour of the month actually a bit. I've seen a few people have just gotten litters out of him as well. So, yeah, I'm trying to go for the, the, the bloodlines of some dogs that will match in further back. But I try to look for something that, you don't, they don't have to be perfect, but I like the way they get the job done is sort of how I, I look at it. You know, I don't try to look at the nitty-gritty. I just want to be able to like what they do. Um, and a big one for me is how much they commit to the job and the owner. Um, I've always sort of had the theory that you don't have to be the most talented dog in the world. Um, you just got to want to do it for me, and that's that's sort of enough, I think, sometimes to – to do it because there's no point having an extremely talented dog if it won't do what you ask you may as well have an untrained dog um i sort of think personally all this is just personal opinion but um yeah that's sort of how i feel about the whole whole thing so yeah like we've got to have some ability otherwise <laughs> you, you you may as well just be flapping a paper bag around but um yeah i sort of like a a dog that's more willing to do the job for me and it doesn't if it hasn't got the max like you know it doesn't have to be a superstar if as long as it's trying for me i can sort of work with that We've had a question come through from Dave Motley. Um, how do you see yourself as a role model to young girls coming up in a male-dominated industry? Oh, uh, <laughs> personally, I, I, really, think, I yeah, think it's um, and inspiring to watch personally. Um, so, but how do you feel about it? Yeah, I don't. I personally, honestly, I don't really. I try not to think about it too much because probably be a bit much on me. Uh, um, <laughs> Oh, that's why I just try to be honest um, and and I just, yeah, I hope that I'm a good role model. Um, I, look, I am aware of it. I try not to do, you know, swear too much and everything like that when it comes to these sorts of things because it can <laughs> sort of fall out of me. But, yeah, look, it, it's a privilege, I think, um, really. And, and there's, like, I know there's a Kate Jobs one that I looked up to when I entered dog trialling because I, I – you know, I saw her as she was quite successful. You know, she was competing with boys and she still is. Um, but I just liked the way she moved around the group, you know, everyone. She communi- She talked to everyone. She didn't care who you were. And she, you know, she was really polite and she, she'd get in there and help pack up and set up and time keep and things. So I actually used her as a bit of a role model coming in as well. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a daunting thing, I think, um, personally. It's not something you take on lightly thinking that there's these people looking up to you and there's people that, you know, want to do what you did. But just, I just say to them, you know, aim higher. Is you know, I'm, there's more than what I can do. So go for it and, and have a crack and don't, don't let the boys scare you. They're not that scary. That you know, If you actually talk to them, they're, they're pretty soft, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they're, they're really good. Like I've, I've, I've really enjoyed coming in the, the dog scene and and found everyone really really good to talk to and get along with. So um, yeah, I don't know if I answered David's question there, but yeah, I find it quite daunting, but I try my best. I think it's very honest. Yeah, that's, that's it. If it's honest, it was the right way to answer it. So I've <laughs> um, got a question here from Amanda. Um, do you find that your more experienced dogs actually sometimes read stock better than yourself? Um, and then sometimes you may actually distract them. Hundred percent. Yep. Um, you know, they, there's many a times the dogs will be and go, "Shut up, mate. We've got it covered." Like, yeah, we've done it before. <laughs> um, but yeah, like they will still 
the most of them, some of them won't, some of them are a bit arrogant, and um, do whatever they think needs to be done. And we have our little headbutt mm-hmm. moments because I go, that's not actually what we're trying to do here. Um, but, yeah, definitely. And and sometimes they, I'll make the call and they'll do it and then I go, like I've done, I've done it at dog trials and, and you if you there usually the judge hears me go oh sorry mate that was me because <laughs> it's just completely blown the whole thing out and I've just made a mess of something um but yeah the dogs definitely uh know what their job is and and know what they need to do and and there's times where we do um make mistakes because that's just that's just learning how to do something I guess but yeah the, the experienced dogs that's what gives that's what it is experience is that they've done it before and and they they're the same as us they learn from the mistakes they make and and as much as they've got a heap of energy if they got to work harder my dogs are smart enough they figure it out they figure out an easy way to do a job and if they don't have to work a million miles an hour um they won't because the problem for my dogs is that we've got to do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and they don't you know it doesn't pay to work at a million miles an hour five days a week you get tired pretty quick so yeah my older dogs smarten up pretty quick um and and yeah start to figure out the system and the easiest smartest most efficient way to get a job done the dogs start to figure that out um and and but yeah they will still that's why i try not sometimes i try not to overdo the commands and just leave them work at times because when I that means when I want to put the command in there they're actually more likely to believe me because they go well you weren't wrong last time where if I command the shit out of them all the time 90% of the time I'm probably going to be wrong and they'll be like well every other time you're wrong so we're just going to do it our way anyway um so, so yeah I try to uh leave them alone when they're doing it right I'll try and leave them alone so they get the reward for do it, figuring it out themselves. So I don't want to have to sit there on a whistle saying left, right, left, right, left, right, walk up, walk up the whole day. It just it gets tiring. So, yeah. Uh, good answer. We've actually um, just had one of our friends from the Netherlands um, just drop in and say hello. So it's uh, good to hear that we're, uh, we're widespread tonight as well. Like we have got a set yep. of questions here. So anything that we don't get to, uh, we apologise, but we will try and get through to as many as we can. We I'll are, get the answers shorter. Yes. We, no, no, you're all right. We're just going to about that hour now, so um, we'll, we'll probably just grab a couple more. Um, one here from Martin. What do you? What advice would you give somebody outside the industry starting to yard trial? A newbie, maybe weekend warrior. So we can start here ourselves, I suppose. <laughs> um, schools, obviously, schools, or um, I 100% recommend people. Try lots of different options. Um, the best way to know if you're learning the right thing is if you go to a few different things and, and like, everyone's got their own style, but we've generally got the same goal, you know. Lots of people say stop and a recall, first thing you teach a dog, you know. When you start to get consistency in the, the training method, I guess, um, or, the you know, like the, the ways to do things, um, that's what I do because then you, you can figure out who are the – actual doers and who are just pretending they know how they're doing um you sort of figure people out a bit and and go even if you're not at a level to trial go watch a trial stand next to someone um again don't don't stand next to the same person every time stand next to different people get different people's opinions ideas be brave talk to the people that are organizing it they'll point you in the direction of the people that actually know what to do um and yeah, and just start watching it, get a part of it. Um, join your, I don't know, whatever state you're part of, join the the trial page, like Victoria's the VYFDA, um, New South Wales, as well as New South Wales, um, the yard, whatever, yeah, whatever your one is, sorry. South Australia, yeah, just get a part of the groups, get on the Facebook groups. Um, and yeah, and ask all the questions because that's, that's what really sky like skyrocketed my trialing success quickly was, I'd be coming home from a trial or Monday after a trial weekend. I'd get in the ute with Trav, got an hour drive to a job, and I go, "Hey, Trav, what happens? You know, why am I losing all these points or whatever else?" And then that's it. Trav will just tell me for the rest of the drive everything that I've done wrong, and, and it, I'd get and it and it, and it really fast tracked it. Having someone to, to tell you what you don't understand about the trials because there's so much about the trials that you wouldn't realise you lose points for or just you as a handler, the things you can muck up. Um, the amount of times I'd get to a put-away gate and be like, oh, thank Christ, I'm done, 
and cross my dog on the way to the put away and then and then let me dog run a muck on the way to the put away because I was just that relieved that I was done. Um, and that's where I blow, blow me trials all the time. Um, that's off the dog. Yeah, so that's the thing. So, yeah, really just put yourself out there and, and talk to people. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you is just talk to everyone. You talked about different platforms there. Uh, where do you believe Dog Talks um, spot in our community? Um, where can we help our members? Well, I think what you're doing with this is fantastic, um, especially currently it seems like Victoria and New South, they're all in lockdown. We can't sit around the fire and talk dogs anymore at the moment very much for people. Um, so, like, I found it really good and, and it gives people access to people that aren't nearby. So, you know, like David Motley and, and all that, anyone, a lot of the people from New South Wales, I don't see unless it's at a national event, so maybe once or twice a year. Um, and it's the same, you know, Tassie and New South Australia. We don't get a chance to cross paths very often, so any opportunity to sort of let down our hair and have a chat and a beer or whatever else, um, I really found this really good because you, you feel like you're a part of the conversation, um, which is something I miss from the trials actually is just being a part of a conversation about dogs. Um, so, yeah, I think I think what you're doing right now is fantastic. You must hate a beer as well. <laughs> oh, it's, it's allergic to them. Yeah, proper. <laughs> the best, best thing about the camera not working tonight is you don't know how many I've done. <laughs> well, actually, we've had a couple of questions. Why isn't the face to work, face going? So we were actually speaking to Bree before the interview, but then the, she had a bit of an internet issue. And I've um, no idea what. I've tried every button and it just I, won't come back on. I think it's just the um, internet on your side and our side. I'm not sure if it's connecting quite properly, but it's it, all right. It doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's all right, guys. You don't need to see my ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> so if there was one person you'd like to see us sit down and have a Q&A with, who would be? Well, I came prepared for this question. I've got a few on my list. Um, yeah, Laura can write fast, so they're all right. Yeah, so I've got... Uh, Maddie Sherwood, who obviously I brought Zoe, well, Zoe bred oh. Zoe, um, and and I read his thing about Wonder in the magazine. So I'd, yeah. I'd really like to hear a bit from Mate, uh, Maddie. Um, I think he's probably got a few good stories, um, and he and he's quite you know he's, he judged the Nash, the Australian Yard Championship, so I think he's qualified enough. Um, someone from Victoria is Ro uh, Rod Cavill. He's a bit. Yeah. He's the Victorian. President of the BYFDA, and, and I think he's been he's been around dogs plenty long enough, um, and got some really good dogs, and I think he'd be pretty hard to good luck trying to get him out of his onto the onto the screen. I think, and I think he'd like to hide a few things, but yeah, there's also you know like um, like I said, Kate Jubb, someone that I really looked up to coming in. Another woman, if you're looking for, her, I think she'd be good. Uh, obviously, Travis Scott, you you got to give yourself an extra hour for a conversation with him. Um, <laughs> and then even, yeah, Jake Nolan, because I know he's got completely different um, approaches to things than what we're all used to, so I wouldn't mind, um, yeah, seeing you have a chat with him. But that was my little list I wrote up for you. No, no, no thank, thank you. you. Appreciate no it. <clears throat> well, we, uh, we have stole a bit of your time tonight, so we might um, start to close up a bit here. But yep. um, what the... Uh, What's the best question tonight, Bro? Well, it's a toss up between Kate and Will. Um, probably say Kate for the, the perfect dog question, um, yeah. I reckon. Well, um, Kate, if you wouldn't mind messaging the page um, and we can get that uh, dog food off to you. So thank you, Enduro, again, for their ongoing sponsorship of our live Q&As. We'd like to thank you for that. Um, and thank you, Bree, for tuning in tonight. Um, no right. and all of our members as well. One last question. Um, mm -hmm. You had to choose between fighting 20 ducks the size of horses or one horse the size of a duck. What would you choose and why? Well, I'd probably take on the horse the size of a duck because <laughs> at least I know it would be smaller than me and I might be able to just wrestle it to the ground a bit. <laughs> I've wrestled a few ponies in my um, stable hand day, so I think I've got it figured. Uh, <laughs> that's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before we get going as well, um, most of you know that um, through the month of October, Laura and I uh, have registered the Dog Talk team for One Foot Forward for the Black Dog Institute. Uh, this week, Natalie Grimmer actually joined our team. <coughs> so um, thanks that, for that, Natalie. Um, and we encourage everyone to jump on board. And it doesn't matter if you're going to walk 20 k's for the month or 200 k's. Uh, 
I yeah. don't know about that. Or just talk about <laughs> what was out there. So that guy must have been really thirsty. We will put up <laughs> another link um, this week to for you to register if you are wanting to. So, so we're happy to take your money if you want want to sponsor us. <laughs> but uh, more so than that, we'd be actually um, appreciate it more if people actually jumped on board um, and just joined the team and just walked. Um, I think it's a great cause. So um, just encourage people to jump on board. Awesome. So. Sorry. Yeah, if you're wanting to jump on, um, we are looking for more posts on our website. Uh, the more you interact, the more we all get to see from each other and learn. Um, so, yeah, we'd really appreciate that as well. And on that note, I suppose, um, please remember, uh, we learn every day and the day we stop learning will be a sad day. Thank you. Thanks again for um, jumping on, Brie. No worries, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.